everyone, this is Olaf and this is our first full day in Paris. We had great rest and beautiful weather, the X100F with me. I have one more camera on my back. In the next few minutes, I'm going to meet with Ibarion Xperl. He is just a stunning photographer. We have never met before, so I'm really looking forward to see him in Paris, discuss photography, and maybe we can shoot together. We will see. Take a look at the light. It's really beautiful. Got to go. Need to shoot. We have quite a nice weather, uh, two cameras with us, uh, the X100F and the GFX. Uh, beautiful place. Can it get any better? And yes, it can, because with us, we have Ibarionex. Hey. Hello, hey everybody. Yeah. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, we have a great time shooting this morning, talking photography, uh, you know, it's, it's always an adventure with Mario Next, whatever you do. No, I'm really glad that I got a chance to be with you all after talking to you on the internet forever. Oh, yes, and, yes. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you and your lovely wife, the camera person, the magic behind the camera, <laughs> the, the video camera at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we have a great time right now. We are just strolling around Paris, looking for the great pocket of lights and the things we exchange ideas, how we could incorporate a great image. So I'm sure we will share some that we shot in Paris, you and me, yeah, and maybe even we can we can share with with you guys uh, uh, how did we do it, why uh, why it works, what it doesn't work. So so we have a lot of fun. Oh yeah, that's nice. A little bit the sign is destroying, but but I don't know. Look at that. Here. Oh, you had such a... Hey, look at that here. I know. Shadow? You can actually incorporate this yeah. into the shot, yeah. Because that's what I've been trying to do. I'll see something that's very yeah. obvious. Yeah. Right? Make that shot, and it's like, okay, I've done that before. How can I make it more complicated? Exactly. I'm not sure if I... Ah, it's not bad. What do you think? <laughs> yeah. You, 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 you look like vertical though. You, yeah, you see I had to lower just to get rid of the... Yes. 
Okay. What happened? What happened? One more time. One more time. What happened? Got this. I was looking. We were. I was talking about layers. And I think I need to underexpose more. But I kind of like the composition of this shot. My only issue ah, is this. Too much. You know what? See, you see the shadow here? Yeah. And there's a shadow over there. Oh yeah, that was it. Did you see that? Oh, that that's what I wanted. But it needs to be, of course, is a little bit overexposed. Oh yeah, we got the same shot. <laughs> Kashu, it needs to be on camera. A baroness is stealing my shots. Okay. <laughs> Just kidding. So, so this is a great example of a spot where you could spend hour or even more. Everything is there. Great texture, light, people walking by, and there are so many possibilities for different uh, compositions here. So I'm using this pocket of light here on the ground with the lights on the building at the back, with, with some shadows, some structures. It, it's really the, the, the possibilities are limitless here. So sometimes in street photography, it's very important just to slow down, stay in the same spot, and think about all possibilities, okay? When you think about composition and you don't have idea how to frame the shot, one of the most important things to think about is light. I just want to give you an example. Take a look at the scene. You have a beautiful entrance with the gorgeous elevation and in the background you have the building in a very strong light. All you need to do is to underexpose, in other words, make your photo darker, okay? And most cameras has this knob, exposure compensation, uh, but this is the way to do it. And you will see uh, the photo that I took just a few minutes ago. The star of the evening here, Ibarion X. He's a brilliant photographer, educator, workshop leader, best-selling author. Like if you if you really want to learn photography, I urge you to go on Amazon or his website and buy some of his books because these books are really something. This is not like photograph and I had a great trip. No, this is not it. This is very deep stuff about photography. Uh, and the host and producer of the Candid Frame, I think, without exaggeration, I can say that's the number one photography podcast in the world. Uh, Ibario next only made one mistake in his life is inviting me on his podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but if you really want to see the worst episode, that's the one to listen to. <laughs> No, but it was what was really amazing that I was on a few, quite a few podcasts, but the level of preparation and the type of questions Ibarionex asked me, I was just, holy smoke, I, I'm not prepared. So, no, that's how deep he goes into photography. 
So I have to say um, I'm extremely pleased that you found some time to visit us and, and to be with us. And when we are talking about this kind of level of photography, take a look at this. I witnessed how, the, how Ibarra next to, took this image. And this is just brilliant in photography. Timing, idea, everything about it. Like that now, I'm, I'm oftentimes trying to create that depth. So I'm well aware that people moving close to the camera are going to be blurred. Um, oftentimes I look for the scene first, you know, because so much of what uh, street photography that I see is people just photographing people walking down the street. And, but then no one's paying careful attention to the composition to the frame. So I tend to oftentimes do the reverse, is I'll find a scene, like that scene for the cover of the book. I was walking and I saw that guy leaning, waiting for a bus, but I saw the facade of the theater behind him. So my calculations first went to, to okay, how am I gonna frame the theater? You know, I'm going to go horizontal, I'm going to go vertical. I'm going to bias the exposure for the, for, the, for the building, render him pretty much as a silhouette. So I'm thinking about everything else except him in terms of my calculations, in terms of what I'm going to do with the camera. And then once I've done that, then I focus on him. And then just trying to figure out, not just in terms of his placement in the frame, but also paying attention to the subtle changes in body language. Because here I had the luxury of time, right? So he's not really aware of me. So as he's shifting and changing, his body language is changing, I'm able to make a frame, make a micro adjustment. Like one of the things I noted was the hat and the outline of the hat against the marquee. So it was not just the crook of the arm, but it was like, okay, where do I want to place the hat? So. But there are other times when I'll see somebody who I want to photograph, they're coming, and then I have to make those same calculations on the fly. I'll see them, oh, it'll be good, and then I'm looking, okay, where can I position myself to be where I can, le I can leverage that, that person that I find interesting. Because usually I'll see them, and then I'll immediately look around. Right? And I'll go, okay, if I move further back, or move further forward, or run ahead of them, you know, because I'm always looking. I'm looking where I am, but I'm always looking, always looking like 50 yards this way and 50 yards that way.